So as a kid, I was never really uh, much of a sportsman. Um, I always liked football a lot. I would watch it, you know, read the, the magazines and stuff like that. But um, it wasn't until I was about 16, 17, and the head of football at school um, convinced me to get into my coaching badges, which I did. So um, I did those. I was made head coach of the under-14s team and then the under-18s team. And I think that was a point where it was the first time I'd really had to work with people older than me and and really try and get respect from people who wouldn't naturally maybe have the respect there. So that was a really good learning experience for me, and I really, really enjoyed it. I went out to America afterwards and, and studied in Washington, D.C. at the George Washington University, and I did a degree in sports business. And it was there I really got involved in the extracurriculars. I didn't really focus on the academics that much. But what I found really important was, was try and get that experience as quickly as possible. So um, I became head coach and president of the cricket team, um, which we took to na nationals in Miami, and that was really, really cool, um, as well as sort of building an umbrella organization for the 32 student-run sports there, bringing them all together, and I ran that for three years, where we sort of, you know, lobbied for extra funding, which we got, and, and all the sorts of medical care and everything that we didn't have before. Um, and, and then after that, I, I got offered to be um, the general manager and, and head coach of the, of the men's soccer team out there, and again, took that on and, and really we made the changes off the field. So it was really, um, you know, in terms of having schedules, in terms of having uh, rules and regulations and the guys buying into that and, and even like uniforms and trying to just become more professional. And we, you know, we met a certain t time before we had the meal together. And I think that was something that no one else was really doing at that level. So we found we had massive success through that. And, um, you know, I, I think we went from outside the top thousand nationally to the top, top 24 at our peak. And, you know, I think that's something I'm really proud of and something I still talk to the guys about today is is really how how much we we're able to do in that time. Um, but at uni, I took all the time I could to try and get experience. So I worked on two Indianapolis 500s um, on the crew there, which was, you know, a fascinating experience to be part of the uh, greatest spectacle of motor racing and, and, and do that live. And, um, but also worked at the FA and at Southampton in their academy uh, for a summer each. And again, learned a huge amount. That was my first real taste of, of full professional football. Um, when I graduated, I thought I'd have loads of opportunities based on my experience. But actually what I didn't consider is that I'm not just competing against people who are my age and, and, and you know my experience level, but actually dealing with professionals from outside of football and, and in the industry as well. And I really struggled to get a job out of uni. Um, I think I applied for about 100 different jobs before I got a call from Peter Wilt, who was the general manager of Indy 11, um, a new startup franchise in the NASL, um, which is the second division of American soccer. And, you know, at that point, I was already getting ready to move back to my parents' farm and, and prepare for a life of farm work, which uh, I don't think would have suited me too well. But, um, yeah, I went out there as team operations coordinator to begin with and then promoted to manager, and it was it was fascinating. I mean, we're building a club from the ground up. We had... You know, at the beginning, we had no fans, no players, no no coach, no training ground, nothing. And, you know, I was involved in building all of that. And I think learned a huge amount. Never worked so hard in my life, such long hours, but really, really gained a lot. And I was involved in the ticket sales and the sponsorships and the, the contracts and the transfer, you know, um, registrations and picking the kit out and all this kind of stuff. And, and really uh learnt a huge amount there and and at the end of that I, we finished and we had the league record attendance of about 12 13,000 people a game we signed Cleberson who was the um 2002 World Cup winner for Brazil who'd been at Man United as sort of our marquee player and you know it was really really fascinating to watch that club grow and, and see where it is today but in that summer of 2014 I got uh you know I spoke to Les Reed and he he wanted me to come back to Southampton where I'd been an intern and and become their first player liaison officer um, a role that I really didn't actually consider would be a good fit for me. Um, I wanted to work in support relations and eventually convinced me and I, I came back and, and it was good because I was working with a group of players who hadn't, weren't used to having someone there and so, you know, gave me that time to kind of grow into the role and um, really, really enjoyed it to be fair and, and get, got a late lot out of it and was able to build it in the, in the way I wanted to do it and um, thoroughly enjoyed my three and a half years there. But after that period of time, I was looking for a fresh start, and, and that came in, in the form of West Ham United, who um, were looking for a head of player care, and um, Jose Font, who'd moved from Southampton to West Ham, he put in a good word, but also, you know, I think I was ready for the, the move, and I was hired in March 2018, and 
um, inherited a difficult situation, and and you know we had to make a lot of changes and and really get the trust of the players, and and I, you know in time I've done that and brought in new staff and really thoroughly proud of what what we were able to achieve at West Ham. Um, you know I, I left in December 2020 as um, as head of player care, and I left a really top department with great people and great reputation and just great processes and. Um, thoroughly proud of, of, of the work that my staff have done and, and helped me with that. So um, definitely feel like I left West Ham in a much better place than, than I came to it in. Um, but now really excited for this, this new chapter with the player care group. And it's a new consultancy where I'm trying to take that experience from a number of different things throughout my life and, and give it to organisations where a lot of the time it's a new in industry. They don't know necessarily how to go about it. So I'll come in there and, and I'll help them out and, and it might not be every lesson that I've learned or I might learn something new from them as well but the idea is to provide that expertise and experience in building player care, doing it in the right way with the right principles um, in transparent, honest, open and really building something that brings the, the athletes and the players together uh, with, with the, with the organisation to create a more harmonious relationship. So really excited about this. Um, for more details, please check out the website at www.playercaregroup.co.uk or get in touch via email at contact at playercaregroup.co.uk. Thank you very much.